we wheat farmers in Kansas get a kick out of people growing wheatgrass in, in a tray in California or wherever, even, even here in Kansas, it's amazing that people are growing wheatgrass in trays when right outside their window uh, is wheatgrass growing in the field. Look how pretty this is. This is beautiful wheatgrass. Currently six degrees below zero Celsius. Last night it got down to nearly 20 below zero. It's nearly Christmas time. We're here in Kansas. The wind's out of the north and it is just freezing. All this research that was done on wheatgrass was done with this. This, this stuff here is equal to uh, 15, 20 pounds of green vegetables. This is what this is what the studies were about. Not grown in a tray. This could be cut all winter long. It doesn't. It does. The cold weather doesn't hurt it. It helps it. Uh, for anybody who really has studied the research that was done by George Kohler and Charles Snobel, they know that the wheatgrass that's in the books uh, on wheatgrass was this, not something grown in a tray. It's January 4th. It's a negative two degrees. Celsius right now. Oh, it's a, it's a one degree above zero. It was negative two degrees a little bit ago. It's warming up a little bit this afternoon. It's been below, uh, well, it's been as low as 10 to 15 degrees below zero Celsius in the last week. Um, as you can see, the wheatgrass is still green, still loaded with juice. It's a little wilted from a week of below freezing temperatures, but it certainly is very much alive and very much filled with the kind of nutrition that uh, people only can dream about when they're growing it in a tray. It's still so juicy. It's amazing how wheat grass in the winter time has almost like a natural antifreeze that keeps it from from uh, like other plants would be wouldn't be green like this. A lot of it's fallen close to the ground because of the cold temperatures to keep the warmth the ground to keep it from getting too cold. But all you have to do is lift the leaves up, and they're about three or four inches long at this point. Amazing that when you grow it in a tray in seven days, it's three times taller than this wheatgrass is after 90 days. But look how much darker green it is. And you'll see when we make the juice out of this, how much darker green the juice is. Green is chlorophyll. Green is nutrition. The darker the green, the more nutrition there is in the product. And I just harvested this wheatgrass that was... Um, I've been growing uh, the past week. It's been minus 10 degrees Celsius most evenings. Uh, today it was a, started off the day at about a negative five. Uh, when I harvested this, it was a plus one. So most of the past couple of weeks, this wheatgrass has been in freezing temperatures. This has been the same amount of tray grown wheatgrass. That cup would have been about half full. But this wheatgrass juice coming from winter grown wheatgrass in the middle of winter, real wheatgrass versus tray grown, is almost as thick as syrup. Now there's about a, about a tablespoon of um, wheatgrass juice in there. Very uh, you can see it's just, just barely covering the bottom of that glass. But watch what happens when I add filtered water to it. Look at that. It's still as darker green as it was before. And when you taste it, it tastes better, much better than what you would get in tray grown. And it has a, just a strong flavor with this good flavor, has tray grown wheatgrass, uh, but I didn't have to get as much uh, juice uh, to get the same amount of nutrition.